So there's this guy, a botanist, who you've probably never heard of, but in a minute, you will worship him. You might say, no, I'd never worship a botanist. I mean, that's for vegans. Okay, I'm gonna change your mind with two words. Ready? One is French, the other is fries. And hey, what do you have against vegans? They're amazing. Hi, vegan associate producer Carly. Whereas a chef might experiment with flavor combinations, Luther Burbank's creative playground was nature. You were more apt to find him laboring amidst agriculture than lounging beneath an arbor. A contemporary of Henry Ford and Thomas Edison, Burbank made it his life's work to create new varieties of plants, ranging from flowers to fruits to cacti. Altogether, he is credited with more than 800 new varieties, and he was posthumously issued 16 plant patents. I visited Burbank Lane in Greenfield Village with Deborah Reed, curator of agriculture and the environment. This tiny building was brought to Greenfield Village in 1928 and contains some of Burbank's belongings, a desk, equipment, and photographs. Who was Luther Burbank? Who was Luther Burbank? He's a plant scientist, or a plant breeder, or a plant geneticist, or the world's most famous gardener. The world's most famous gardener. Now yes. that, of all the titles you've given him, that's kind of the most impressive, for me at least. So what made him the world's most famous gardener? He believed that he could make plants to suit anybody's wildest imaginations. So what's an example of something that the public didn't know it needed until Luther Burbank? said it needed it. Wow, that's a good question. I can tell you what he created that they knew they needed, and that was a disease-resistant potato. And the name of that potato is? Is the russet Burbank potato. Now, I have heard of this potato because I believe that potato is the source of a snack, of a side dish, I'd call it, that I happen to like very much that comes from a fast food restaurant with some arches. Yes, yes. I mean, very big it, deal. It is their primary potato. What Burbank did that was so unusual is that in addition to selective breeding, he cross-pollinated. So he would take things that didn't naturally pollinate, like plums and apricots, <gasps> or the Shasta daisy, which was four different types of daisies, and it took him four generations and 17 years of cross-pollination to perfect that plant. These are very pretty. Go ahead and take a closer look if you'd like. Burbank managed to accomplish his goal, which was the purest white petal with the brightest yellow center. In contrast to the Shasta daisy, there's the spineless cactus. If you'd like to take a look at that, there's little baby spines, but those will not mature. Instead, he crossed cactuses with very few spines and ultimately devised a spineless cactus. Why should we know Luther Burbank's name? Every single day we encounter the things that he created. 